Welcome back to Elden Ring The Ultimate Guide Part 27. Today is Volcano Manor. If this is the first time you've watched any of these guide videos, we recommend you watch the video linked in the description below. Now, we are currently in Jarberg, and we're just going to be talking to the Jarbern right now, and we need to make sure that he is giving us a certain part of uh, dialogue. So he's currently talking about the poachers, and I'm pretty sure that is a dialogue that we need. So as long as he's talking about poachers, that's all good, because this means that we're at the right spot for Dialysis Quest, which we will be doing at least partially in this episode. So, we're warping back to Volcano Manor, which we did discover in the last episode. And, um, we're picking up this Myth and Stone 6, and now we're about to get invaded off, uh, yeah, this guy. The but game. as, yeah. But as we have the Great Stars now, and as we have Wild Strikes, fuck Giza, that cunt's dead. So, we get the Giza <laughs> wheel, and, uh, yeah, there's like, before we get into the meat and potatoes of Volcano Manor, we've got a few things we need to do. So first of all, we need to speak to Tanith and join the Volcano group and then get the drawing, the drawing room key, which allows us to open up some of these doors. I think it lets you open four of them. It's the two on this side and then two of the doors on the other side because one of them is kind of broken. That one there doesn't open, but the, the rest of them in this hallway will once you've got that key. Yeah, picked up so a perfume that... bottle, I think, in the first room as well. Yep, I was just about to say, we've got a perfume bottle in that room. Raya will... Raya will go to that room now and then. Uh, and here is where the... Um, what's the volcano? The clan are called, or whatever? The Recusants. Could not have tortured that name out of me. So, uh, yeah, so... Um, Bernal has moved here from the uh, Warmaster Shack in Limgrave, and here is Dialos. He's also joined the Recusants because, I don't know, he's bored or something. So we're going to speak to all these guys and exhaust the dialogue. A yeah, there's going to be a lot of that in this episode. It's going to be talk to people, make sure you exhaust the dialogue, sit at a grace to progress the quests, do the same thing, rinse and yep. repeat. So, for some reason, we're coming back to the Warmaster Shack just now. Yeah, we're coming back here because this is the first part of the Volcano Manor's quest line, which is quite involved. So, in the drawing room, we picked up the first of a few Volcano Manor contracts. You have to come to a location marked by a red circle on the map. This one's outside Limgrave's Coliseum. You need to find a red summon sign, kill the host as an invader, and... Uh... Yeah, once you do that, you get a reward from each kill. You can come back to Tanith to get a second reward from each kill, and then pick up your next contract. But since we have Wild Strikes, largely these NPCs aren't going to present that much of a problem. Nah, definitely not. So effectively, it's just a bunch of assassination requests for you to kill a bunch of the NPCs. For whatever reason, this doesn't actually negatively affect the game at all, uh, so that's kind of cool. Um... Yeah, I guess this... we need to do that uh, about four or five times throughout the game. But it gets to a point where we need to stop doing it until, like, we get to sn Mountaintops of the Giants. Uh, so we can't finish the quest until Mountaintops of the Giants. And we can't do... Uh, what's his face? The big boss. Rykard. We can't do Rykard until we've finished this quest, because otherwise we'll fail the quest. So, yeah, we can't do Rykard until Mountaintops of the Giants. So we just Switched put on that guy's armor. There, yeah. Yep. yeah, the the scaled set, it has very good weight to defense ratio, um, but it did require that we put on the Great Jar's arsenal for the first time in the playthrough. So we had to boost our carry weight a little bit to be able to wear it, but here's a familiar face. Yeah, after speaking to Tanith and getting Magma Shot, which is your reward for killing that guy, we can come to speak to Patches. Again, we need to get a whole lot of speaking out of the way. So, talk to him, exhaust the dialogue, and then we need to go back to the drawing room. Speak to Raya. Speak to Bernal. And exhaust their dialogue every time. Yep. As we said, this is a very involved quest. There's a lot to it. So, there's your second contract. That one, I believe, is on the Altus Plateau. I think so, so we're going to go do that now. So we can warp to Old Altus Tunnel, which will uh, be the fastest method of getting to this guy. So effectively, we're just going to do the same process as we've just done. 
We're going to go to the guy, summon him, kill him. We'll get a little reward for killing him. We'll go back to Tanith and then get another reward. Yeah, this NPC is Riley the Idol, an NPC wearing the full Confessor set. Um, and the reward you get from him is actually pretty useful. It's the Crepus' Vile. And it's a talisman that makes you significantly harder to detect. It eliminates all sound that you make, so you can actually sprint around near enemies and you don't make any sound, so you can sneak through areas without needing to use the sneak function anymore. Uh, you're also welcome for all the editing out of uh, loading screens that I've done. So I want you to say thank you in the chat, or in the comments rather. There we go, there's a vial, got some, we've got some black key bolts. And now we'll speak to Tanith, and we get the Serpent, serpent Bone Blade. Not a bad weapon, it's a katana with an 8 poison on it. Um, unfortunately you can't infuse it. If you could, it'd be much, much better, but it's, it's fun. Not great, but fun. Now we're going to speak to Patches, we get Letter to Patches. Aye, because he can't be asked to go do his own job, so he's recruiting he some schmuck to do it. Some schmuck who's obviously a schmuck because he's wearing a jar on his head. So now we've done that, that. Now we've done that second assassination. We can come to this room, and uh, this is Raya, who's uh, turned back into a snake, sort of lizard. I mean, they're called snakes, but it's clearly clearly a fucking lizard. Uh, so exhaust Raya's dialogue. You no doubt saw the spirit at the end. If you speak to this spirit, um, it progresses this spirit's quest. It is um, something that we don't do for some time because it involves killing Rykard, which we actually don't do at the end of this episode. But once you kill Rykard, you come back to this location and get a little reward for it. So that's us. got letter to Patches, we've got a red letter, and then we've got letter to Bernal. So now is there, there's another assassination we can do right now, which we're going to do right now, and that's the Rune Strewn Precipice one. Now we're going to go kill Great Horn Tragoth, bless his soul. Uh, for this one, we're going to be using um, Lion's Claw. Now the reason for that is that because of the amount of hyper armor this guy gets on his fucking hammer, uh, Wild Strikes doesn't actually work uh, because he poises through your attacks uh, rather than the other way about, so... <laughs> uh, you can, in fact, just spam Lion Claw because he can't knock you out of Lion's Claw. Uh, because Lion's Claw is, has the property of being unknock outable. Uh, Checkmate, liberal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, as you see, Lion's Claw is very fucking good. Um, and, uh, aye, so that's Tragoth. Uh, apparently, we didn't get anything specific for killing him. You, now, do, you, next... get the, you get the bulgur oh. armor set. There you go. Okay. I, I, I fucking knew that was wrong. Yeah. And now the next two quests cannot be done until Lindell and uh, the uh, Mount Tops of the Giants. So now we speak to Patches because we've done his one. That was... He was meant to kill Tragoth. So then you speak to him and then you rest and then I'm pretty sure you speak to him again and then he'll give you the fucking reward because he didn't want to hand it up the first time. Like yeah, your reward is. is the... He's a fucking arsehole, and I hate him. Um, yeah, your reward's the Magma Whip Candlestick. It's actually not a bad weapon at all. It seems goofy at face value. It's yet another looks like a meme, but isn't a meme kind of weapons. Um, all around not bad, but speaking to Tanith again, making sure to exhaust Tanith's dialogue. And we're talking to her about Zorai. Well, Raya, but Zoraya now. Um... And then it just, you just mention that to her, pick the top dialogue option, I'm sure. And now you can come back. Now we've killed Tragoth. You can now come back, speak to Dialos. Uh, instead of going back and resting at the Grace, you can just warp back to the Grace from where you are. And now you do that. That does the same thing. Come back, speak to Dialos again. Exhaust his dialogue. Yeah, not massively intuitive, as you can tell. There's a lot of just sort of running back and forth and checking in with people. Yep. Now we can exhaust Raya's dialogue. I believe at this point she's talking to you about sounds that she heard coming from behind the walls. Yeah. Um, Which is the clue of how you actually get to the rest of this area. 
So now we're resting. We are putting... Well, we put Aslan back on. Actually, just keep Lion's Claw on. It's probably better. Um, we've mentioned this multiple times. So now Dialos. So now we've... We went to Dialos. We warped back. We spoke to him again. We spoke to Raya. When we rest again, Dialos should come here. So long as you've done exactly what we've done. So now yeah, we go we... to Jarburn. Exhaust his dialogue, and Dialos should be uh, fucking about with some pots. Yeah, that's right. You'll notice you've done it right when, if you check the drawing room, Dialos isn't there. Or if you were to come back here and speak to the Jarben, he has more dialogue than when we checked him with checked in with him like we did at the start of the episode. But now we can progress on to actually fight some things and play the video game. Yes, uh, we can actually fucking, we can, we can, 10 minutes in, we can play the game. So as you saw, we rolled into that bit of wall, which made it disappear. Uh, and now we are just uh, following this dungeony back room area around. Uh, you can just ignore the snails. Uh, and that gets us the Magic Warriors cookbook. And now this brings us into the room that we can open. We get the Brave Perfumer, uh, I'm going to say caravan. Car man. It's not Ca much better, honestly. Yes, yeah. So that's that's cool, though. It's depraved perfumer summon. Um, so I've never used it, but presumably it's um, it's stupid, like, spark attack is very good. So in this room, there is a Bloodhound Knight. Uh, I'm definitely, for, for certain, Lion's Claw would have been better than Ground Slam. Uh, for fighting this thing, but again, it's it's not so much better. Ground Slam is still obviously very good, but Lion's Claw is probably the better option given the fact that we're using the Great Stars. Obviously, Aslam is going to be better than whatever the fuck we can put on the Katana, so just that's the distinction there. So once we kill this guy, um, it will drop uh, the Bloodhound Claws, so that's pretty cool. Now, just as a quick warning for the rest of this episode, there is a couple of dodgy edits because uh, the footage was less than stellar because of a few uh, stupid mistakes that I made. So, sorry about that, but I've edited it as best as I can, and it certainly is followable, just heed the words that we're saying when we point out the mistakes. So, we've opened that door, we come back to Volcano Manor, we're going to speak to Tanith, we're going to talk to her about Zariah again, and um, we're going to exhaust her dialogue in regard to Zariah, and now we're going to speak to her again, presumably. Yes. Yeah, you you can now tell her of the other other part of the manor because she wasn't aware of its existence. She gets upset about it, and you can now progress the area as you would have had you not come back here. Yes. So yeah, a bunch of these snakes again. I actually think that um, lion's claw would have been better. Uh, that was one first, the first annoying thing where this guy fell down here rather than just dying. <laughs> and immediately oh. poisoned. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We really were riding the struggle bus in this area. That's not to say that the build was struggling. That's to say that Tony was struggling. Yeah, there's a lot of variance going on here that wasn't great. So now we're going to whip out the bow for whatever fucking reason I'm not using the pulley bow, despite the fact that... Oh, I do change it. Thank fucking Christ. Okay. <laughs> Switching to the pulley bow in my equipment. And uh, we're just going to take care of these dreglins because these guys are actually a huge pain in the ass because of specifically what it is that we're trying to do and getting pelted off their shitty attacks are a, a, a huge annoyance. You'll notice we're not actually managing to kill them in a single mighty shot here. Um, you could very easily remedy that by putting the arrow's sting talisman on that we picked up in Caelid. Um yeah. It would have saved some arrows and some frustration. You could do that. You could also cast Golden Vow. That should also be enough to kill them all in one shot as well. So getting that Golden Rune 5. Uh, thankfully, there's no dodgy edits just now. This is all good. Definitely just copy what you're doing. Now this is one of the first mistakes I made. I thought you could kill this thing from here. Uh, you cannot. So I have to quit out and jump back in. So don't shoot it from there. Just ignore what i just done there. Um, there's another snake man. Again, that was an annoying thing. Instead of killing it, it just fell down. But that's fine. 
Yeah, it really was just a comedy of errors, of things that weren't really avoidable in a lot of yeah. situations. Uh, so now, uh, what is that? there's definitely a, there's another thing that was a bit of a mistake. So here's where I quit out and go back in to respawn the um, to respawn the scarab. But obviously, as such, this guy respawns back up here. That's okay. That's fine. Actually, it's preferable because it means he's not down there for when you actually do need to be on that lowest level. This is true. So, again, uh, this is a bit of a dodgy angle. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I fuck up killing this thing from up here again. So I get it there. Oh, I think I might get it. Okay, okay, this is how... You, so, you don't shoot it when you're down there, you shoot it when you're up here in this, in this way as well. So now, there's a bit of a weird edit there. We're still on the same roof. What we're just doing is we're going to shoot the dogs that are down on the road level. I'm pretty sure that was an edit, but it, that, I think this is still followable. We've just killed the scarab, now we're shooting the dogs on the road. Um, simply because the dogs can actually kind of trip you up as you're running away from that abductor virgin. Uh, that happened to me and I died, so we're not taking any risks. If it happened to me, it can happen to you. So we kill the dogs and then we are going to just uh, make a beeline for... And you really do not need to do this, by the way. This item is not worth... Um, So yeah, we're going to head up this roof, <laughs> jump on here. We're going to grab this Smith and Stone 6, and then we're going to jump off down here. And this is the item that you can certainly miss because it is just a finger remedy. And there's a bunch of dogs in this uh, this alleyway with an abductor virgin hot on your heels. So this, we are getting it to show you. Just ignore this, get the Smith and Stone 6, and then just be on your merry fucking way. So now we're back onto the rooftops and we're going to head back up to the place where we shot the scarab and the dogs. Now, bit of a dodgy edit coming up, but ultimately just uh, ignore the difference in health that you see, but do follow what you see on screen. Um, so we're going to jump onto this rooftop, we're going to jump onto this little bit of rooftop. We are going to pick up the Smith and Stone 5 and then drop down onto the street. And now there's another omen killer type enemy uh, for whatever reason. Is this so again, another one that, that drops its weapon? Is this Omen Killer Cleaver 2? I think it is. I, th I think it is, yeah. That's funny, because that means two of them are in this same area. Yep, Omen Cleaver. Omen... Great Omen Killer Cleaver, yes. Uh, so that's that's cool. We're going to pick that up. We're going to pick up the Air Tree Seal. Um, which I can't remember what that does, actually. That is the best... Um, faith casting tool in the game. Ah, is yes. What that is. Once you are at the, I think it's 70 to 80 faith threshold, so the sort of hard cap for faith, um, that outpaces every other casting seal in the game by a significant margin as well. Cool. So, another edit coming up, but this is just because I kept not making this jump. It is quite difficult. You need to kind of get right into the, the wall, you need to hold jump, you need to be sprinting, but if you if if you fuck it up, it's fine. You can just uh, you'll just fall down here, and then the route that we take back up. For what you see just now is just how you get back. It just mean that you missed the Smith and Stone the, the Stone Sword key. Rather. Honestly, so just keep just keep doing that it trouble. To... For all that trouble, just buy a Stone Sword key. If you're struggling <laughs> to make that jump, just go to any merchant and buy one. Patches sell some. That is actually a bit of a, yeah, that is actually like some good advice, ultimately, if that jump has given you more hassle than it's worth, because we pick up every stone sword key we ever need, and there's plenty to buy, so if it's giving you trouble, you can just buy one. So now we're just heading back up, and this is back at this little bit of road. So yeah, all good. Frankly, the um, Lion's Claw, again, would probably have been better at killing Nomen Killers. You should be using the Lion's Claw, but it does basically what Ground Slam does. Okay, I'll stop mentioning Lion's Claw now. So now you can use the Stone Sword key you just picked up, to or bought, uh, to get into here. There's an Abductor Virgin that we are going to completely ignore. <laughs> and, yeah, this uh, one's just a non-issue, just run past it. There's a Talisman up here. Crimson Hammer Medallion plus one. I thought that was it. You know, I thought that was it. 
Yeah, because uh, it's that... the best version you can get until you've almost finished the entire game. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that is actually a talisman that we do, in fact, use. Uh, turns out having more health is more good. Um, I want people to repeat that in the comments, actually. Make sure you know it. 60 yeah, Vigor health... is actually good. More health is more good, especially when your weapon heals you by a percentage every hit. Mmm, delicious. That's what we call uh, synergy. Yeah, more bigger, more better. So we're not going to enter that building. We're going to come around the side. There's actually this this one particular building is surprisingly involved in how you get about it. Um, but yeah, that's like that's essentially like the first bit of uh, Volcano Manor done. I guess we're kind of in the second half of it now. So we're picking up that Smith and Stone Four, and then there's a ladder that we're going to go up. Ride that to the top, and then there's a drop down. Like I said, it's very involved, but it's fine. You can do it. It's I fun to explore. Rune ten in here. Oh, there's the other Omen Killer. Who likewise drops Axe three. So when you unlock Arm three, you can equip Axe three into the Axe three slot. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good. Arm three is pretty good. So, we get the Albanoric Staff and the Albanoric Mask from that the Gullatine, I guess? <laughs> yeah, basically. I think there's an item in here. Am I, well, right. am, am I mistaken? Is it up top? There's a Golden Rune 10 somewhere around here. I'm almost certain of it. Anywho. I think we get it up, up here. Interestingly enough, we have had very few comments about missing items. I think the only items you have quote-unquote missed have been crafting items, which we were not picking up to begin with. So, I don't think we've missed anything so far. No, I don't think so. Um, that is how you unlock arm three, though. You have to pick up every item in the game. So, if you follow this guide, you get a third arm. Yeah, in Elden this, is, Ring. this is true, actually. It does increase your damage and makes your dick bigger. That is the third arm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You just get It becomes opposable. It grows a thumb. <laughs> Oh my god, it's fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's... Oh god, right. This is where we're gonna discover another one of these kind of enemies in this game that make you want to actually go to Miyazaki's house and fucking petrol bomb it. Right, it's these things. They have one attack and it's a fucking grab and they just charge at you. So be aware of this, right? Stay the fuck thankfully, away from these things. Thankfully, they make a very obvious sound cue when they're coming for you, so... And they do die they're quick. Not yeah, they do. They're not easy to miss. Um, they have a chance of dropping the Black Dumpling headpiece, which is very rare, but if you receive the Madness status effect while you have it equipped, you get a damage buff. So if you want into, like, hyper mode buff and one-shot everything on your way through the game, if that's what you're into, then that's one of the key components for doing that. So something to mention, actually, is that the Man Serpents can, in fact, drop the Magma Blade, the Man Serpent Shield, Volcanic Stones, and the Gelmir Glintstone Staff, which only drops from one enemy in the entire game, and it is uh, one of these. There's, there is one Sorcerer Serpent right at the end of this level, and that's the guy that drops the Gelmir Glintstone Staff, and I don't even think it's a guaranteed drop. No, it's not. It's not guaranteed, um, and the Magma Blade definitely isn't, because that drops off exclusively two enemies in the entire game, which is a shame, because it's as drippy as fuck, and it's also very, very good. It's a curved sword with a unique Asher Wall. Yeah, so the ones, so that the the Man Serpent that we just fought there can only drop its shield, uh, that's not, that ain't dropping the Magma Blade. But now, no, we've done this little that, bit. That'd be too easy. It would be too easy. So now we're heading out here. Uh, we're just gonna we're just gonna jump down because uh, we take no damage from that jump, so fuck it. And uh, there's uh, something fire, something fireproof dried liver. I was half right. I'm giving myself half a point for that one. Now there were two voids in what you'd said. It was something fire, something. So you're already <laughs> getting one out of three points for that. Fine. Well, I get a third of a point then. Listen, so you could do better. Apply yourself. <laughs> See me. <laughs> so we're just gonna we're just gonna jump across here from the roof, grab the golden rune nine. Thankfully, lava does very little damage. Also, turns out that you can just jump onto this roof from that bit of debris, which saves you going all the way around. 
Uh, so you can pick up the Smith & Sons 6 on that roof and then just head on your merry way. And up here is a, a, a man serpent that is wielding a fucking weird cat of three tails or some shit. I have no idea what that weapon is. It doesn't exist. Um, oh, it's the magma that. whip candlestick without the magma. So it's just is, the whip candlestick, I guess. Is that what that is? Yeah, yeah. So does, does the magma whip candlestick have three magma whips? Yeah, there's like three tendrils that come off it. Huh. How about that? What a, what a weird fucking what a weird fucking thing. That has to be a, a bug that went unnoticed. So this guy, <laughs> randomly, is a Black Flame Monk. And he can drop the Black Flame Monk Hood, Armor, Gauntlets, and Greaves. I do also believe he can drop the Monk's Flame Mace like the regular ones can. It, he may be able to. Uh, apparently, that was unclear from the wiki. So, if anybody can confirm if he can drop that or not, that'd be good. But interestingly enough, he is a black flame monk. Um, so, this is the first time we've encountered one of these, I think. Not just a yeah, normal flame monk. Is. I also couldn't tell you where these guys show up elsewhere in the game. There are two of them in the Divine Tower of Kaled. I can tell you that. They're, you're right, they are there. Yeah, yeah. Seemingly, it's wherever godskin enemies appear. So there's an apostle at the bottom of the Divine Tower, and there's a um, noble in the church that we just avoided going in because we have something else to do before we go do that boss. Yes, so what we just done was we opened up the shortcut back to the first bonfire, well, the first grace, rather. And we did die to this boss. We're about to do another magma worm. This uh, boss arena is a bit annoying, but as we have wild strikes, as we have um, the mimic tier, as we have the great, the dual great stars, what you want to do is run all the way back here, and before you summon anything or whatever, you want to get this thing's attention and bring it back into this part of the arena. You do not want to summon the mimic. You don't. You don't want to fight it in that little island that's surrounded by lava. And you definitely don't want to summon the Mimic to you there either, because he will just walk into the lava and just fucking die. So again, we're going to be careful, we're going to wait for it to stop doing this fucking stupid attack, and then when it's finally quit, quit done that, we're going to do a different technique, because we were, I guess we're not using Wild Strikes this time, we're going to show you that spamming Blood Blade is in fact insanely, insanely fucking good against these things. You could use Wild Strikes, like the last one that we done in um, in the bottom of Gelmir. Or you could do it like this. So this is this is just us showing you that there's a different method. If you want to know how to do it the Wild Strikes way, then you can go to the Mount Gelmir episode and look at how we defeated that Magma Worm. Because they're ostensibly the same thing, this just has a little bit more health. But otherwise, yeah, um, Blood Blade Spam is in fact incredibly good against these things. So I do want to expound on that a little bit, as one commenter pointed out in an earlier part. You actually get the bleed build up to occur twice. If you hit them with the actual weapon you're holding, as well as the blood projectile that comes out. Yes. So the bleed build up occurs twice as fast if you are at point blank range with it. It is devastatingly effective and... That person gets a gold star from me because we forgot to point that out. So I'm doing it now in honor of you. <laughs> I got that guy. So yeah, uh, that's why Blood Blade specifically is so good because it can do like double bleed build up. Um, so it's pretty devastating. And as you saw, it was very effective against the Magma Worm. Um, but specifically when it comes to this Magma Worm, the positioning is more important. You could use Blood Blade if you want. Or indeed, you could use just jumping L ones with the great stars and then just spam the fuck out of wild strikes. It's all good. That is that is the other option. But we've already showed that one option. Again, if you want to see how we've done that, go to the Mount Gelmir episode and look at how we killed that magma worm. Um, but instead of re uh, retracing the same steps, we can show you some different techniques because you should be following the full guide. That is, I mean, remember this guide is to be viewed ideally as a whole. As much as it can be used as an, an, an individual thing as well. So now you have to do a very careful drop off down here. And uh, this takes us to... Oh, right. So this this takes us to like a, a stupid secret area of um, 
of Volcano Manor. Right. It's not that stupid. So this is the way you would access this area if you started in the manor. You can also get to this area with the bats and the lava flow by being killed by the Abductor Virgin at the bottom of Rhea Lucaria. You would spawn on this plateau that we're standing on. Well, not the one we're standing on right now, but the one down there where the bats are. You would spawn in this location. You would have the trapped status effect, so you would not be able to leave until you rested at a grace. So it's more hassle than it's worth to be brought here by the Abductor Virgin. Now, I will say... So this is basically a straight line where we're just picking up items, so keep an eye on yeah. what we're grabbing. I will say that if you do get abducted by the Virgin, there is a drop-off to your right when you spawn in, um, close to where we were just by those bats, um, and you can get down to the portion of the Volcano Manor where we picked up the Somber Smithing Stone 5 and 6, which does mean that if you are using a Somber weapon, say the Bloodhound's Fang, you can get it to plus 4 at EG, very, very easily, and you can get it to plus six by being killed in Volcano Manor by the Virgin and being teleported here and navigating this area. You mean by being killed in Rio Lucario? You said Volcano Manor. Oh, did I? My apologies. Yeah, by being killed in Rio Lucario. Um, it is tricky to do. It is not something I would recommend for a brand new player, which is mostly who this guide's for, but that is an option you have. I do want to just make that clear. And I just want to be clear that we actually made an episode doing exactly all this. But in case you're wondering why is this information not just in this episode, well, we really felt that it didn't fit into this episode, or the real Lucaria one for that matter. There's quite a lot to say, and the episode is really quite long and involved, so it really felt like it was just better off as its own episode. So if you want to know how to get to Volcano Manor from Real Lucaria, which is about episode 10, and if you want to know how to do Volcano Manor at that level, never mind this level, then that episode will be linked in the description and in the comments, and it's also in the playlist for this guide. So now we're down here. Um, we're just going to, you know, fight these enemies or whatever. And uh, there's a, a boss in this area that's coming up. So, yeah. But pretty much like you said, this is just essentially a straight line. Um, so rest in here. God, there's really not a lot to annotate for this. It's just to kind of follow what we're doing. I'm going to just jump onto this bit of fallen debris. Grab a smith and stone four, which is uh, not particularly useful at this point. Well, I mean, as you said, for a golden rune packet in an earlier part, it's free. It's right there. You it might as well free. pick it up. Smith and stone six, however. Mm, we like them. Yeah, it's quite nice having having the opportunity in this part specifically to take a breather in the voiceover because the first half of this is chaotic with the amount of running back and forth we've got to do. Yeah, that is true. That is true. This is definitely uh, somehow more laid back, even though we're yes. like in the bowels of this area. I was about so to yeah, say, bosses... standing in a lava flow, and uh, yeah, somehow it's more laid back than talking to people. So we're coming here, we drop through the floor, and then I'm pretty sure... Yeah, the boss is uh, down there. Uh, so the boss, interestingly enough, is Dual Abductor Virgins. Now this is another boss where, lo and behold, the boys puts in fantastic work. Now, the reason yeah, they that do. It's again, the Abductor Virgins do purely physical damage, but they also have a grab attack. So as it turns out, there's actually an even easier way of doing this boss than we demonstrate in this video. So if you want to know how to do it the even easier way, then you should go and watch the bonus Volcano Manor episode that is linked in the description and in the comments and on the playlist for this video. And the boys are unaffected by grab attacks. So, uh, they just, they can't really die. Uh, it's just, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, fun, it's fantastic. So this allows you to just um, distract one of these things and then just go to town on it. Uh, you can use Electrify Armament to do extra damage to these things, if you're so inclined. The only thing that's going to affect these things is the big spinny slash attack. That's that's a bit annoying, because it does get behind the shield sometimes. Yeah, so uh, Lion's Claw. The... Lion's Claw would be fantastic fighting these things, actually, because it, you could just use it through the spinny attack, and it means you would get knocked out of any animations. 
But as you can see, the boy's doing well. Oh, look, it didn't grab shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's great not having... Um, I mean, the Mimic is essentially a summonable NPC player, basically. Yeah. So the Mimic is susceptible to all the same shit you are. So if you can get grabbed, it can get grabbed. Just like with a warm face, if you can be death blighted, it can be death blighted. But the, the boys can't be death blighted. The boys can't no. be grabbed. The boys are just... They're just too good. <laughs> it's just crazy how fucking good they are, actually. Seriously, so, it's my... Right, your takeaway from this guide is use the great stars. Mine is pick up the boys. Like... <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, now we're heading back to round table hold and we should be able to upgrade a weapon a little bit. No doubt by virtue of the smithing stone 6 we just picked up. Apparently not. Now as you can see, our weapons are very under leveled at this point and yet they are still putting in so much work. So theoretically, if you maybe hadn't leveled up the, uh, the longbow, you would actually have more uh, crafting materials and could actually level up your great stars even further than what they currently are just now. But as you can see, even with the great stars at such a low level, they are still so good. Oh yeah, fantastic. I mean, thinking about it logically, um, crafting some slate pots here because they are useful, very useful in fact for the boss that's coming up, but thinking about this it is... critically... Hold on, hold on. Could, this uh... is why, this is why we told you to pick up all those Trina's lilies, because of this boss coming up just now. Um, so it's, it's pretty important, I think, we speak about this. Uh, the next boss that's coming up is a bit of a wall for a lot of people, um, and it is very, very susceptible to sleep. So, of all the times to craft, aside from one other time, this boss and the other times that you fight it are specifically why you want to be picking up Trina's lilies and have the ability to make pots. 100%. What I was saying about the smithing stones was thinking about it critically, you may have wanted to leave the katanas at about upgrade level 12 because that's what you can get to with the bell bearings 1 and 2, which means you could have saved all of your smithing stone 5s and 6s for the great stars since we were switching basically at that point. So, as you can see, one sleep pot was enough to knock this thing out. And the cool thing about this boss is when you do crowns, you can, you, you can put it to sleep and then you can start jumping L1 in it. And, uh, aye, it, it gets knocked over. You can get your, your critical hit in. Now, another <laughs> fantastic thing that you can do with this thing is put it to sleep and then use, uh, you can put Blood Flame Blade on one of these, uh, one of your great stars and then use Wild Strikes plus Blood Flame Blade. That is another way of doing it. Uh, frankly, just, you know, uh, using jumping L1s is, is plenty enough. But Wild Strikes plus Blood, Blood Flame Blade is another option that you can use. Just because this thing is so weak to sleep. Because some things can be put to sleep and then immediately get knocked out of sleep. And they don't have a big recovery animation. But this thing has such a huge sleep recovery animation that you can take massive advantage of that. So, th sleep... Sleeping this thing really is the way forward, and it is such a great technique no matter what weapon that you're using. Because, as you can see, it can't be knocked out of its going to sleep animation, which a lot of things can be. And it can't be, it can't be forcibly knocked out of its waking up animation either, so it's just completely out of commission for an incredibly long time from like one or two sleep pots. I'm sure you've been seeing in this footage, by the way, that the Mimic is doing virtually no damage. And that's because we made the mistake of summoning it with the dagger in its hand. It's been golden vowing basically non-stop because it thinks <laughs> that's going to help. So yeah. if you do come and do this with the Mimic, just make sure you don't, don't leave the dagger in its hand because we basically yes. had to fight that thing solo. We only had three great star and not four great stars. <laughs> and for that, we get the god skin stitcher. So very good weapon. Up... It's one of the heavy thrusting swords. It's infusible. It's got um, good scaling. It's all around a great weapon. Something that if you were going to power stance heavy thrusting swords, you might want to pair with the bloody helix that we picked up in an earlier part. Now we picked up the serpent's amni in there from the uh... plinth podium. Podium. Uh, that's a quest item that we need for Raya. So remember to pick that up. 
And uh, what's this? Golden Rune 9. Very nice. We're going to pick that up and then we're going to head outside. It never fails to amuse me that this room is essentially exactly the same shape as Pontiff Sullivan's boss room. Like the layout's yeah. identical, it's just a lot smaller. I was thinking that, yeah. So from here, we can uh, jump off the ledge. And uh, there's like, an item down here. Golden Rune 12. Like, like, it, could, it could have been any item, right? I just <laughs> <laughs> Lucky guess. Uh -huh. like, it, it could have been the Spectral Steed Whistle. You don't know that. No, because you can't get that if you, uh... <laughs> if you miss it. <laughs> you can't yeah, get partly. it, as we've learned recently. <laughs> so, uh, there's a finger rem rem remedy on that body. Heading up here. So I think there's another abductor virgin, like, comes out the lava or something here, I'm sure, <laughs> from memory. It comes there from it is. the corner of the building, yeah. If you just sort of run around it in a circle like we did there, though, you can just... Bye. Just, <laughs> yeah. So you just juke it and then head into the... Because we don't need to fight them. Fuck fighting them. Yeah, so they're I... not great at navigating windows. We're going to slide down here, and then we are going to grab the drawstring fire grease and head down here. I think all we're down here for really is a cookbook. I think so. Missionary's cookbook? There's no way. There's no way you remember this correctly. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Like Honestly cause... gone to my head, I couldn't have told you the number, but I I was fairly confident it was a missionary's cookbook. <laughs> it's genuinely crazy. Like it's genuinely crazy. So, out through here. Now, there's a, a little bit... We had to do a bit of an edit here again because uh, there's a correct order in which you want to do this. Uh, so, so kill, kill this thing here. This this is one that can drop the magma blade. There it is right there. Yeah, as you can see, it has the shiny sword and therefore it can drop it. That rule is true for most enemies. If they're holding the item, they can drop the item. So... Don't, at least I think it's don't grab this thing just yet. So that's the Crimson Tear Scarab, right? Now, the reason why I don't want to grab this just now is because we didn't unlock the shortcut. So what you want to do is don't grab the Crimson Tear Scarab. You're going to unlock the shortcut first, which we're just about to do, and then grab the Crimson Tear Scarab so you can just come back up this elevator to be here again. Um, so when activating the shortcut, you can drop off in here. You can grab the stone sword key. But in actuality, what you wanted to do was drop off there when you are coming back up the shortcut <laughs> after uh, getting the crimson tear scarab. That's that's the better the better option. So we're grabbing this. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It's just a one slightly more efficient. But yeah, so getting that somber stone five, and then we're coming around here because there's another room that has a bunch of basilisks in it. Right, since it's full of basilisks, I will mention this now. If you are holding the beast repellent torch, this encounter is a lot less intimidating because they'll just never attack you. Yes, now we picked up the beast repellent torch from the uh, the merchant in Dragon Barrow. Uh, thankfully, that isn't a, particu a particularly intense basilisk room, but that is why we got the beast repellent torch because uh, it just basically turns basilisks off. Uh, and that's really, really good for a lot of a lot of, a lot of points in the game, particularly in um, deep root depths. There is uh, a lot of basilisks in there. So yeah, yeah one back room up here. specifically, you are you you borderline guaranteed to get death lighted if you're not holding the torch. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So I um Lion's Claw would have been so fucking good against these enemies. So we highly recommend you have Lion's Claw on. Okay, I said I'd stop talking about it, but I need to keep mentioning it. <laughs> I am compelled to keep mentioning that. So we'll kill this guy. And then I think we pick up a mask or something like that. Headpiece, common headpiece. Right. That's close enough to be incorrect, I think. <laughs> yeah. I'll I'll give you that one. So wait, so this one is now wielding the, the actual magma whip, but the yeah. other one wasn't. It was wielding one that just wasn't lit, I guess. Weird. Yeah. Weird, odd distinction. 
because I realised that the other serpents that aren't wielding the magma blade are effectively wielding a weapon that looks exactly like the magma blade, just not magma Yeah, and every single one of them should have been magma because farming for one of those things is a fucking nightmare. This is another one where, like with the Noble Slender Sword, if you get it to drop, take a picture of it. Join yeah. the Discord. Put it on the Discord. We will be proud of you. I will heart react every one of them. Agreed, yeah. Uh, so this is like, I can remember this encounter being oddly annoying, actually. Um, I, I, I think I think there's like, I think two serpents show up. But we're not doing quite enough damage for it to be not annoying. See, look, it looks exactly like the Magma Blade, but it's just not magma Yeah. Yeah. Annoying grab attack. Don't get hit by that. I love the way these things move, man. They're so fun. Uh, man Serpent Sash is here on this little altar. Probably bad. No, they're actually not bad. It, it does like a big fire AoE because it, it's one of the ones with a candlestick. Oh, cool. That is cool, yeah. actually. So, yeah. So we can kill that. Now, this is the guy that drops the Gelmir Glintstone Staff. And again, it's not guaranteed, so you'd have to come back here and farm it multiple times. I think it's quite cool enemy design, actually. It's got its egg stuck on its head. It's just fun. I like this. Aye. Um, again, the rule holds true, though. It has the Gelmir Glintstone Staff in its hand, therefore it can drop it when killed. Now, coming out here, there's we will be back here. Just wanted to kind of show it off there. There's a sending gate that takes you to Rykard's boss room from there. But again, we're not going to be doing Rykard just now. We will come back here and get it, just so we can warp back there for ease of use later. Um, but for now, just ignore that. But use a stone sword key, get through here, and now we're kind of basically in the last part of this level. So this bit's actually kind of uh, more confusing to navigate than you'd think. We're going to carefully drop down here onto this portion. And then this leads outside, actually, to another abductor virgin, if memory serves. And it usually doesn't. <laughs> well, this this path specifically takes you to the far side of the big room with all the hung cages in it. Oh, I was um, just fucking wrong. Cool. <laughs> the abductor virgin exits on the ground floor. So that's the dagger right. talisman. That improves your critical hit damage. So if you break an enemy stance when you take the riposte, you deal increased damage, so it's similar to the Hornet Ring from the Souls series. Hmm. Picking up a rune arc there, and then heading all the way down to the bottom. That's this room the thing is... is if, oh, you, if you take the careful drop down that we did, um, that, that's actually the easiest way of getting down here, but if you drop down otherwise, it's actually a lot harder. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. So, um, now we're... <sighs> Yeah, now we're down here, there's these fucking black dumpling head guys, and um, yeah, four or five of them is so annoying. So you can just use Ground Slam or Lion's Claw to just kind of brute force your way through this group of these fucking guys. In case we haven't told you, by the way, Lion's Claw's really good. <laughs> yeah. Um... It's, just, it's just the most solid hit that you can do in the game. Yeah, Do I need to hit this thing hard? Lion's Claw. So what we just picked up there is a Seedbed Curse, which we technically need for an ending that we're not going to do, we're not going to get. Um, but that is to progress the Dung Eater's quest. So we actually need to pick up that Seedbed Curse. We're going to pick up that, uh, I think it was a Smithing Stone, and then just get the fuck out of there. And now, this next passage leads back to Tanith. Yeah, that was the Somberstone 7 that you used to be able to grab early. So once you've obtained that item in this area, you can now effectively get a plus 9 Somber weapon at this stage in the game. Um, we picked up Royal Knight's Resolve. That is an excellent Ash of War. It makes your next attack hit 80% harder. So if you make that a charge attack and you boost it with all the charge attack buffs, it hits astonishingly hard. Um, it is well worth keeping that in mind. So, now we've rested back here, we're going to head back to the Temple of Eagle. And now, because we have the shortcut, um, we are going to go back and get the... Uh, the Sending Gate for Rykard. 
Again, though, like yeah. I said, we're not, we're not going to fight Rykard. I get. I, I suppose you could fight Rykard if you wanted to. Um, and if so, just skip ahead to the mountaintops of the Giants episode, which is when we do it. But otherwise, uh, we're just going to get Rykard so we can warp to him later. Yeah, because it interrupts the Volcano Manor's quest if you kill Rykard early. You're better off yeah. finishing the quest, getting all the rewards, and then killing Rykard a little later on. Because honestly, at this stage in the game, Rykard can be a little difficult. This is true. He has, yeah. he has some attacks that just hit really hard. So it's not like he's hard because he's mechanically challenging. He's hard because he can just one-shot you out of nowhere. So yeah, there's the grace, and uh... yeah, that's it. So now, now head back to Tanith, I suppose. I think. Yes, yes, there we go. Yeah, because now I think we're progressing Raya's quest to the next I stage. I think so. So we're going to speak to Tanith. Uh, that was all she had to say, something about come a day too soon. But now we are going to speak to Raya. Yeah, we're going to be handing her the Serpent's Amnion that we picked up in the Temple of Eaglea after killing the uh, Goldskin Noble boss. It yes. Tells, it gives her information about how she was born. Um, and then once you've done this, you can rest at a grace, I believe, and she will disappear. Then you go ask Tanith about Zarias's whereabouts, and she will have moved to her final location, I believe. There's an absence. So now she asks for aid. She's got a, a tonic of forgetfulness. Now, we are, in fact, going to give it to Raya. But you shouldn't. You should. No, you shouldn't. Look, this is an actual ethical quandary. I think that giving her the tonic of forgetfulness will ease her pain because she clearly doesn't want to be a fucking snake. And I think letting her understand how horribly her family have treated her by keeping her in the dark, so allowing her to leave and lead a good life, is ultimately better than letting her stay with her abusers. A Tell us abusers, who's right. Abusers question mark. I think you'll find that uh, she would be excluded from anywhere she would fucking go. Like, she gets to be a fucking human, right? And now she's like, oh yeah, I'm going to leave as a snake. No one fucking likes the snakes. She doesn't leave as a snake. She can leave and still present as human. But here's Raya in her final location where Tony ultimately <laughs> ends her freedom. Suffering. <laughs> Look, this is where you give her the potion and it denies her all free will. Um, I don't think so, actually. I don't think it does. Yeah, it does. Imagine you could forget every bad thing that ever happened to you. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Yeah, but that doesn't make me forget every bad thing that ever happened to me. That makes me forget the revelation that my family are awful. Oh, they're awful. They, they let you live in a fucking castle rent-free and that's awful. You're, what is, you're smoking crack, bro. They <laughs> so... abandoned her in the castle, bro. I killed her! Anyway, right, so... <laughs> I knew this part was going to be controversial. I knew it was before we started recording it. <laughs> so we still don't have enough to upgrade our weapon. Uh, I, th I think we get that stuff in the next episode because we get the Bell Baron. Uh, but we are going to just munch some runes and we're going to level up. And I think that is it for Volcano Manor. I think it is. Look at that. Level 102. 56 Vigor. And okay, there we go, that's Volcano Manor. Done. Join us in part 28, where we're going to be doing Altus Plateau Inner Wall. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.